Hello, my name is Nina Ranz, uh, and I will be trying to demystify the C++ committee. Because I've noticed that quite often people think we're some sort of magical creatures that hide in shadows, when really the truth is we're just nerds that's, that are really bad at marketing ourselves. Um, I think we need someone to help us with that. So I am going to try and tell you a little bit about who we are, how we work, how the language gets made, and how you can join us, hopefully. Uh, I am a committee member. I've been one since 2013. And interestingly, I actually started attending committee meetings right after one of the ACCUs, because there was a meeting in Bristol. And somebody said, well, why don't you come along? And I thought, oh, really, I can? <laughs> Excellent. So I went there and they just can't get rid of me anymore, I guess. Um, I am now also the committee secretary. I am the study group chair for a group that's a C, C++ liaison group, which is a slightly different kind of study group to all the other study groups that we have, and in, in the sense that it's shared between us and the C committee. And the idea is to just improve the communication between the two committees because we are evolving and we're trying to evolve as much as we can in a compatible way, which is not always possible, but we're trying to get there. I'm also on the C++ Foundation, and I deliberately put that there because people quite often confuse the C++ Foundation and the C++ Committee, two different things. This is the C++ Committee. In fact, it's the first photo of the, I believe, 98 standard release. Um, it is also called the WG21 committee. Why? Because we are a part of ISO, ISO Standard Organization, which provides a back admin backbone to us releasing the standard. So we can't just release standard willy-nilly. It, it needs to be under somebody, and ISO graciously does that. And they have their own structure, which I'm not going to go into, but they have something called working groups, and we are the working group 21. Another name, another number that you will see or hear noticed, uh, mentioned is WG14. WG14 is the C standard. And like I said, that's, that's the first group in 1998, and it's become a bit of a tradition to take a photo every time we have a standard that's released. So that's 98 group, and this is the C++23. As you can see, we have grown. <laughs> and not only that, we have people that have attended it at person, and we also have people that have attended remotely. So this is everyone who was at that meeting. With more people, we have obviously more ideas. We can, we can make better progress, but we also have more work to do, and therefore, you know, we need more power. So we are always looking for volunteers and for next generations to start helping. Um, all of this that I have in this talk comes from a website called isocpp.org. Uh, does this work? From over there. That website is run by the Standard C++ Foundation. We are just a non-profit organization that sort of helps, um, as it says here, it, it, it provides the support to to support the C++ developer community and promote the understanding and use of modern standard C++. In other words, we kind of help promote C++ and we provide the committee with certain admin help in order to ease their work. We also help people who want to sponsor the committee to do so. But we do not own the committee. We do not tell committee what to do. We don't have any sort of power over the committee. If you can imagine the committee to be a runner, we're just a support vehicle going along and sort of providing refreshments. We also provide a CPP con, uh, 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 missing a word, conference. I need more coffee. Uh, we also do CPP con conference which is in Colorado in September, so please do come along and give some talks. This is us. Um, Inbal has given a keynote just yesterday. Herb has given a keynote in, on, on the first day. And hopefully you know who Bjorn and Michael Wong are. I'm, I'm the second person there, if you don't recognize me. 
like I said, we, we help run this, or well, we do host this website, isocpp.org. It's an excellent website if you want to get any information about C++. In fact, you will see all the conferences right here, and here we are at ACCU. But you don't get just news about, um, about C++. You can also find uh, the, sorry, the standard drafts. So despite the fact that we, because we are under ISO, the committee document, sorry, the standard documents are not free. You do have to pay for it. However, every time we have a meeting, we publish a draft, which is the latest draft of everything that's in C++. Those are completely free and you can always find them. And not only that, whenever we release a new version of C++, the draft that's just before the release is pretty much identical. The only changes that are between the latest draft and the official document that you have to pay for are typos and things like that. So if you ever want to find C++ 17, just Google for um, C++ 17 latest draft, and you will pretty much get identical technical document, and you can use it for references anywhere you want. But let's say we want to get the latest one. So we will go to this isocpp.org site. You will go to the standardization, and right there at the end, you will have a link to the, oh, I really don't know how to use these things, I apologize. We go to the GitHub, and we can get, we can get the latest draft from there. We can even see latex sources of the draft if you want to get there, but we, I don't. So I'm going to go to the N4917 link, and it will get me into the standard. This is the standard. I'm not sure whether you've ever looked into one, but this is where it is. If you go down to the first page, it says it's an early draft. It's known to be incomplete and incorrect, and it has lots of bad formatting. Come for the C++ day for the bad jokes. Uh, <laughs> What I really want to po point out is the contents of the standard. You have the first few chapters that are just admin chapters about how to use the document. Then you have lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff, 2,000 pages of stuff. At the end, you have some annexes that talk about the compatibility with C, compatibility with the previous um, standards that we had. But the, the thing to note is that the first some chapters, 15 in fact, are talking about the syntax of the language. So we have things like um, declarations, expressions, classes, templates, and then in the chapter 16, we switch to library, and we start talking about library stuff like concepts library, strings library, um, containers, iterators, ranges, numerics, and on and on and on. So this already informs us that we pretty much have a split in the standard. One is the syntax side, one is the library side, and that kind of gets reflected in also in the way that the committee works. So if you look at the structure of the committee, we kind of have bits that look after the core syntax and bits that look after the library. So ignoring all these things down here and just looking at the blue and um, brown bits, Let's say, let's say that you want to write a proposal. You want to put something into the standard. You're really passionate about it. Things like stack traces in, in exceptions, for example. What you do is you think about the problem. You think about how you want to solve it. And then you write the paper. Presumably, you also try and implement it. If it's a syntax, you try and implement it in a compiler. And if it's a library feature, you try and implement it in a library. And then you come to us. If the paper that you, talk, that you wrote is about the syntax of the language, it's going to go into a group that's called evolution. Or here, it's, can I walk with this? Yes, I can. Or here. It says core evolution, but we really call it evolution. If you wrote a paper that talks about a new library feature, then it goes into this library evolution group. These are the people that will discuss with you the merits of your proposal. They will try and see whether the solution you have is the best solution or whether it can be improved. And quite often, almost always, you will get feedback on how to improve it and how to make it work for everybody. Um, one of the things that is quite surprising when you come to 
a committee meeting is that you realize how big the C++ world is. And despite the fact that we may all agree that this is a good problem to solve, we may all not agree that the first solution that we come up with is the best solution for everybody. So we will go and we we'll debate until we find the best solution and then either the evolution group or the library group agree that this is what we want. Once you've done that, you probably already have, but then you have to verify that the wording that you wrote, which is, oh, please start. The thing that actually goes into the standard in a sort of a, a legalese word, wording is correct. And again, if you have wrote something that is a syntax feature, it goes to the group called the core, which is that brown one over there. And if it's something that's relevant to the library, it goes to the library group. And sometimes you have features that, that cover both library and the syntax, and then everybody has to see it. But the idea is the evolution group first approves it, and then when it's approved, uh, core or the library group, they just check that the wording that you have is unambiguous, that it says everything that you want to say, that it doesn't say anything more, and it doesn't clash with anything else that exists in the standard. And then once you do that, then it goes in front of the whole of the committee, and then we just say yay or nay, and if you say yay, it gets put into the standard. So when I joined in 2013, those are all the groups that we had, but as you see, we grew. And not only did we grow, we had so many more topics to cover that we just couldn't cover them all at once. So we had to expand um, the way the committee worked. And we started adding these study groups. And the study groups tend to focus on one specific topic. They tend to have um, the domain experts discussing anything specific. So you would have heard almost certainly at ACCU SG7 mentioned, because they do the reflection. You almost certainly heard about the SG21 that handles the contracts. And before that, we had concepts. Are they there? I don't see them. Um, concurrency, modules, network. So we had, we, we have these study groups. They come up when they, when they are needed. They do their work. They sort of, in, in their own smaller group, agree on how they want certain things to be done. And when they have something ready, they write those papers that I mentioned. And then it goes into, again, evolution, library, up, up through the wording groups and into the plenary. And that's how we get new features. So excellent. Now, how do you come in? <laughs> the first thing to do is to attend the committee meeting and just see how we work and where you want to be. Um, we have committee meetings three times a year. Normally, it's two in the States, one in Europe, but because we had quite a few of them in the States, we're going to have three of them in a row in Europe. We have Poland, Austria, and Bulgaria. You can attend in person, or you can attend remotely. We have a very good remote setup at the moment. These days, sometimes, I always attend in person, but sometimes the study group is so full that I go to my hotel room and just attend remotely from the same hotel because the setup is just so good that you have, it's like being in the room. So you choose one of these meetings that you want to attend. And then again, you go back to the ICCPP website. There's a link that says, send us an email telling us you will be a guest. So you click there and you say, hello, I'd like to come. And that goes to Herb, who will notify I so that you will be there as a guest. And it comes to me, and I will send out an information that's specific for that committee meeting that you need to be aware of. Usually we have a Sunday orientation meeting for newcomers where we talk about how the committee works and what is a good idea to do. One of the things that I would recommend is to just attend every subgroup for at least one meeting. We meet in parallel, so you can't be in all rooms at once, but at least every subgroup once, because they all have very different dynamics. They solve different problems, and, and you simply have to find your, your home. Um, the, I remember when I attended, I did that, and I went into evolution, and it was 2013, so they were still discussing concepts, 
and this was the C++11 concepts and it was very heated and everybody was very loud and very passionate evolution. They were getting things done and I was getting so tired from so much information and I went to sit into this room where everybody was on a break until it turned out that they were not on a break. They were just the core group, which is the most meditative group. <laughs> And they care about every single comma and every single verb and every single sentence. They're really, really specific about everything. And, and I, I like this, so that's why I stuck around. But anyway, the point is try all of them until you find your home. We have two meetings that I also advise you attend. One is on Monday before we start where we discuss how we're going to be organized for that week, which groups are going to be in session, where they're going to be held. And then we have one at the end of the week where we see what we have done during the week and we vote on polls. Now, as a guest, you, we, you can't vote on the polls. You do have to be a committee member to do that. But during the week, in all of the subgroup sessions, you can participate in all the discussions, in all the debates, and you can participate in all the votes where it makes sense. Like, we ask you, please don't vote unless you understand the problem. But if you understand the problem, you have followed, you're interested, just do so. Um, and then if you like it, you will again send me an email and you will say, hey, Nina, I really like this. I want to continue participating. How do I do that? I will point you to the national body that can help you get set up to be a full committee member, or we can find different ways to um, participate, including through the standard C++ organization. Now, I have said that you need to write a proposal, and this sounds like a big thing. Now, when I say write a proposal, that doesn't mean write the next contract's features. It can be any kind of small change in the standard, because every change to the standard needs to be ratified by the committee. So even things like adding new functions to an already existing library type or changing like one of the small features I remember that was in syntax was we had, I don't know if you remember in the old days, we had, when you wrote lambdas, the smallest lambda was square brackets and then curly braces. But if you wanted to put mutable, you had to also put the parentheses. And somebody wrote a proposal to say these parentheses are not obligatory if you put mutable. Like that was the proposal and that was a paper and it was pushed through the committee like anything else. So yeah. I, I think with this, um, I'm, I have really not much else to say. I hope you realize that we are just people, we are just nerds. Lo lots of us here are committee members, and lots of us started as ACCU or some other conference attendees. I think we had Khalil, I don't know if Khalil is in this room now, but Khalil is somebody who gave a lecture yesterday on exceptions, and he attended CPPCon this year. And then somebody said, you should come to the committee, and he did. So he is also one of us now, hopefully. I think he said he was going to be there in St. Louis. So yes, please contribute, discuss, and come help us. That's all.